So we're gonna try that again, uh, talking about top five health concerns that are most common, affecting millions of people, but it's often due to lifestyle choices, waiting for Dr. Webster to get on now. Um, and too many people, and you'll see the write-up I have of this, so it'll, it'll be posted to, to Facebook, but then I'll have a write-up that's going to be attached all the way to uh, on my YouTube video. So you might wanna, when that gets posted to my 21 Day Body Makeover page, click over there so you can see the links that I've put in there and the cases that we're discussing and just more about the, 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 the topic today. But what I was saying earlier, you know, we're adults now and we sit long periods of time. We're not exercising that often or at all and the intensity is usually low. And when that happens, you're naturally going to gain some weight. Not only that, as we get older, the body doesn't compensate as well for our lifestyle choices. Food, smoking, drinking, and so on. Therefore, you can't keep the weight off, can't keep your hormones in balance, and stay healthy. We're not kids anymore, we're adulting now. And when you're a kid, what are you doing? You're, you're um, Doc, I, I invited you, you have to uh, uh, ask to come back on again. I had to delete the video and start over. I see you're commenting. Anyway, so, but, but when you're a kid, you're always running around doing all these different things. You're, you're riding your bike to play tag football, right? With your friends. If you're a girl, you're out with the girlfriends and you're doing a lot of things. You're walking around the mall or whatever. Maybe you're doing, even doing sports yourself, right? And so you're staying really active. But that all changes as we get older. And, and what's in, interesting is we're so intelligent, but we don't recognize that we're, we're not progressing anymore that we're actually slowing down. Things are changing. We start to have this impingement here or this range of motion there issue and, and we're, not a f we're not living the life that we want to live but we don't recognize that because of the day in and day out routine that we go through and then we're, we're not motivated to exercise anymore or exercise at a higher intensity because we're hurt or because we don't have enough time or we feel we don't have enough time. So I don't know how to get Dr. Webster on I have already invited him. Um, let's try again. And then how do I get out of this? So I don't know how to get out of that after I've invited him, if I'm honest. And I don't even know if I'm still on. I hope I'm still on. So I'll just keep talking and we'll see if Dr. Webster comes on and uh, instead of deleting that video again. So. There's this, this fine line between what people want to hear that keeps them comfortable and how they operate and how they, they, they focus on their, their concerns, their changes, their goals and so on versus the necessary changes to help somebody realize the goals that they desire. And how does that come into uh, effect? What do you have to change? I don't know what has to change. I wanna see if Dr. Webster's still on. Give me a moment. I guess he is. There he is, okay. So give me a moment. Approve. Good. Four cases, five separate people, different ages, different conditions, different limitations, and tell you what we think, I have a fly in here, excuse me, what we think they need to do to benefit the, their own life and how to uh, progress, progress beyond their own impediments and due to their lifestyle choices. So, hey, Doc. Hey, Hey. I don't know what happened. Sorry about that. that. That's fine, no worries. So I've already talked about the beginning of the show, where we're going, what we're trying to accomplish here, um, and help people move beyond their own impediments. Uh, and you'll notice that in my suggestions for each of these five cases, there's a common denominator, there's a theme here that we all need to consider when, when we have a, a life that is less than optimal. So it could be mobility issues, it could be weight loss issues, it could be disease issues. And when it comes to eating and or exercise, there's a beginning. You don't just go do it. You don't watch a YouTube video and go do it. You have to know what it is. And there's a common denominator. I'm going to stick with that in the beginning of each one of these. So um, I talked about adulting and how our lives change and we're not kids and playing football and tag, you know, uh, riding our bikes and you know, other sports and all that anymore. And just people want to keep hearing what's comfortable to them. But we don't bring mainstream information to you because mainstream information has obviously failed millions of people. We bring you the information that actually works. We're both practitioners, or I have been a practitioner in the past, so um, I can still speak to that because our genetics and our uh, biomechanics, the way the body moves, has not changed and it won't change in our lifetime. That's right. Yeah, you won't get a low-fat diet or a uh, bunch of aerobic cardio advice here, <laughs> just because it's the big thing in the media. 
You are not going to get that. So let me expand this, Doc, because I have people that are um, commenting. You said you're on. There you are. And then we have Renee says, thanks for all you do, George. Love to buddy. Thank you, Renee. Uh, she likes positive changes, transformation direction. I love all that. Thank you. Anybody else, any comments or questions, let us know with today's uh, topic. Doc, these cases here, the first one we're going to start with is something that's familiar to me. Many years ago, I, I trained a, you know, a very old lady. Her name's Marvin Jean. She was 87. We're talking 20-something years ago. I don't think she's still alive. If she is, she's probably in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe 107, whatever, so that, that's not necessarily the Guinness Book of World Records, but she would be up there. Um, you want right. to take us oh, I saw it just the other day, George. It was like yesterday. They, they gave a lady a plaque for being 116 years old. Guinness recognizes her now as the oldest woman in the world. I think she was Japanese, but I'm not positive about that. I think the Japanese, I think Japanese last the longest. <laughs> Typically, yeah. Typically, right. So the first one is a 75-year-old female. She's, uh, she's in good enough shape. Her doctors have said she's good enough shape with her heart, cleared to exercise within her own tolerance, of course. She has moderate to severe osteo uh, osteoporosis, and she's of normal weight. One of the things we tend to see when people get old is they tend to lose a bunch of weight because they're losing muscle, but also they're not eating as much. Therefore, they're just smaller. It doesn't mean you're healthier just because you're smaller. But you want to comment on that, Doc? Well, as far as that goes, I, I wonder if it's that we see people who are old that are lighter. Is that because they're losing weight as they get older, or is it because heavier people tend to die off younger? That might be part of it. You just don't see obese hundred-year-olds. That's something you never see. So I think a lot of that is not that the obese become small as they get old, is that the obese die before they get old. So, uh, so well, you know, that, that's an interesting perspective. One thing for people to consider as well, when we talk about obese, you don't have to be Jerry Springer on the show, 600 pounds obese. Obese is someone who has 31% body fat or higher. So if you've got 60 pounds to lose, you can be obese. Guess what? If you've got 30 pounds to lose, you can be obese because that's where the muscle to fat ratio comes into play. So if you have 30 pounds to lose and you think you're not, you're not that much different than the 500 pound person, in some respects you are, but in others you're not because you're obese and you're not going to be that 100 year old person. And some people don't want to live to 100. I want to be out by 55, doc. I got four years, you hit me with the bus, I'm done. <laughs> but let's check back when you're 55 if you're still saying that. <laughs> I think you're going to be doing all right when you're 55. Right. And uh, as, far as, as far as that goes, I've, I've been working this, uh, this outline of this program that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be teaching chiropractors all about metabolic issues, um, including obesity. And it's, it is strange when you start to look at the, the definition of obesity. It depends where you look. The definitions vary a lot. But somewhere between 30 to 50 pounds or maybe 60 pounds uh, over over your ideal weight is about where you start getting into real major problems where where your risk of, of diabetes and heart disease and high blood pressure and dying and mortality uh, goes up quite a bit once you hit that point. So that's about where they're, they're defining this word of obesity. But really, if you're 31 pounds overweight or if you're 29 pounds overweight, there's not that much difference. So it's certainly this gray scale. The bottom line is you want to get as close to that ideal weight as possible. Now, in this particular case, which you said you've, you've worked with a a woman like this. I know a lot of people like this. This, this person is very much um, like my mother-in-law. She's very much like my grandmother, although my grandmother's older than 75. But this is the type of patient that you see oftentimes when they get to be that age is that they just simply want to be able to function in life. They don't want to lose their independence or they, they don't want to lose their freedom. So that's, that's the basic goal or her main goal is she says she's noticed that she can't get around like she used to and she wants to regain or maintain her freedom and not depend on others too much. And that's a worthy goal for somebody that age. She doesn't want to necessarily go out and dunk a basketball. That's, that would be silly for her. In some other cases, that might be a completely worthy goal if you're 18 years old and playing college basketball, but not for her. So, um, so what do you think about this? Because how would you approach this, this particular person? So I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier. There's a lady I trained many years ago, over 20 years ago, 87 years old, Marvin Jean. She had severe rheum rheumatoid arthritis. Her fingers were crooked like that. We're, we're all familiar with that. So, so obviously her limitations are her fingers. She had pain. 
She had uh, range of motion issues. She had weakness issues. So what I did with her, and again, like I mentioned at the beginning of this topic, is we're going to talk about certain things. There's a theme here. There's a common denominator for every single person that we're going to talk about today. And with this person in particular, uh, my suggestion is to begin in the pool because water, water is 15 times more resistant than air. And it's also much easier on your joints, not swimming, but specifically strength training. With Marvin Jean, we didn't even use the weights. By the way, I put a link in, in here. You can see some, uh, a good pool workout that somebody uh, did. And uh, when you go to the, the published version of this on YouTube, it'll also be on my 21 Day Body Makeover Facebook page. You click on that, you'll see the entire write-up of what we're discussing today, all the different cases, and some links as well. Anyway, with that said, you can use these weights, these water weights. They float to the top, and by you pushing down and doing different things with them, they create resistance. With Marvin Jean, I had her use her own hands and feet. And so yeah. you, you, you create this cupping motion the best she could, and we would do things for your shoulders and your chest and your triceps and then biceps and... Uh, and then jumping around in the pool, and then walking as fast as she possibly could. I'd have her in shallow water. Some of it would be deeper. And that really gives an incredible workout to someone, especially if they have uh, uh, mobility issues, so range of motion issues, pain in their joints. They don't have to do these, all this weight stuff. So that's, the, that's what I gave her that really worked. Um, people often wait until it's too late to be strong, to have postural integrity, to stand a certain way, move with fluidity. And they become reactive, um, and it's, it's unfortunate because it affects your range of motion. There are not many people who can put their arms straight up over their head without feeling resistance and or pain. I mean, simple, silly things. And if you notice that, even though you're not working out, you're not in a good place, nor are you in a place to go exercise. So it's important that we find time to exercise, otherwise illness will make time to find you. And I wrote that on Facebook yesterday and it got quite a good response. So what I would do with, Mar with, with Marvin Jean is I would have her first assessed, let's look at her range of motion issues. What can't she do? Where is any pain that she has, um, limitations? And then with her, I started her in the pool. So the, 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 the common denominator here starts with everything that I just said before the pool, because some of that's going to change with all of the others. And, he, uh, and now we have, we have food in there, but she's not talking about food. Her goal is specific to mobility. So the only other thing I would add in there are certain supplements like omegas, right? Uh, and other uh, high fat foods like uh, olive oil and avocado to, make, to maintain, actually to lower inflammation. Doc? Uh, well, I would say the first thing with this patient, and I love this, the pool thing. I didn't even think about that. And I think that is probably the most appropriate form of, of basic exercise. I, I, I love that. The first thing I want to say is don't harm this patient. That, this is the most important thing in this case because she has severe, moderate to severe osteoporosis. Compression fracture is a very big risk for her. So the first thing I would do um, would be to start with nutrition and start with some metabolic testing I would look specifically at inflammatory markers, antioxidant markers, gut bacteria markers, vitamin D, vitamin K, and some minerals like magnesium, copper, and zinc, all having to do with bone health. Um, whatever's wrong within those, within those parameters, I would do metabolic therapy and nutritional therapy to try to correct some of those things so that we can start getting her bones stronger and then progress gradually to more and more and more intense exercise as the metabolic markers and her bone density starts to improve. Those things can improve, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, one thing that I thought would be um, important with this pace and also um, other than the strength training and other than the range of motion, I thought maybe just, just doing something above your head with no weight, just, just making sure she does this every day as much as she can. Because my grandmother's to the point where she can't get her elbows above her shoulders. That's as far as she goes. Well, she's 83 now. But if she was 75 and could still do this, doing that every day might make it to where when she's 83, she could still do that. So that's important to do, to do those range of motion movements. And it doesn't take a lot of strength, uh, straining or stress. Um, it doesn't take a lot of intensity, but just going through the motions is important. 
And then the last thing with this patient, balance is going to be really important. So I would encourage the patient to do some very mild balancing exercises, but only under supervision. And what I mean by that is go stand in a corner with your back to the corner so that the walls on your right and left, so that if you fall back into the right or back into the left, you're, you're immediately into a wall and have somebody standing directly in front of you and just put your feet together. Maybe you might be wobbly with just with your eyes open and your feet together. If that's the case, do that. And, and I encourage you to do that as much as you can. You'll get better at that type of thing. Maybe stand on one leg if you're capable. I don't know if you're capable or not, but that would be something that could be of help. And also eventually you want to progress and put your feet together and close your eyes. Again, with somebody there to catch you and the wall, the corner behind you to catch you. So those things would encourage balance because range of motion and balance are the biggest issues along with strength training um, that, that plague the older population. So we can address all of those things. So I just took some notes and, and I need to expand upon some of this. One other thing I did with Marvin Jean is I would have her squeeze a ball and, and it was a Nerf ball, but it may have, it might as well have been a tennis ball or, or, or a, a, you know, a, a baseball to her. Right. And so just to get her some strength that way, number one, number two, um, I wouldn't recommend someone who never exercises to do the one leg or even the suggestions you made about the wall. There's nothing wrong with it, but it'll take you a hell of a lot of time to gain the strength you need to move forward. The pool, however, will give you. That no, that wasn't, that, that wasn't George. That wasn't for strength. That was for balance only. Yeah, but what I'm was getting, yeah, right. But I've not finished. What I'm getting at is specifically to pool workouts. If you're running in the pool, forward, backward, side, side, and doing these other exercises, when you get out of the pool, let's say you do the pool three or four days a week, and you do that entire routine, and you're an older person now, okay, and you get out of the pool, I, I, I would bet money, and I'm not a betting guy, but I would bet money that the exercises you suggested would be much, much easier for that person because it's so much more difficult to gain balance in a pool, also depending on how shallow or deep the water is. And then the last thing I would say on the range of motion, I would not have someone put their hands over their head if they can't do it because they may have uh, restriction in connective tissue. So you've seen those things. And Doc, you probably have one of these machines. Those, those I call them thumpers. They thump real yeah. fast against certain muscles. And mm -hmm. so it is of my strong opinion, because of what we used to do years ago on the foam roller for your IT band, and what we would do, not stretching, but actually working those connective tissue and joints to get them to release. How many times have you seen guys who they're like this, you know, they put their arms out to the side and they're ro protracted forward like this, right? And they can't yeah. stand up no matter how much they want to stand up and, and sit back. They can't because their chest muscles are so damn tight. Their back muscles are weak that they can't even put their heads over their hands over their head straight up. And so it's a matter of identifying the very strong muscles the ones that are really, really tight, working on those muscles first before you even try to put your hands over your head because that could be discouraging. And then you can move into other things that, that create strength in that respect as well. So those are the three points I want to talk about there. You want to go to case number two? Let's do it, yeah. All right, case number I two. I agree with all those things, by the way. So the first case was 75-year-old female, mobility issues, osteoporosis issues. Second case we're, talking, we're discussing now is a 60-year-old male, six feet tall, 240 pounds, played football, at 210 pounds, works at the ranch, but has, it for, has no formal exercise uh, for decades. The goal is to lose belly fat, to feel strong, and to have more energy. So here's that common theme that I'm talking about that everybody needs. You would check range of motion, you would check pain, you would check limitations, right? You would been, begin with core stability exercises, you begin also on the eating front, a low carb diet, because you don't gain 30, 40 pounds or more by having a low carb diet. Now there are variations. You can see I'm wearing my Genetic Direction shirt today. So if you go to geneticdirection.com, my company that will test your genetics to identify whether you need more burst type training, whether you need, and it won't call, be called burst, whether you need more strength training, more cardiovascular training, more aerobic training, whether you need certain type of food, more like more protein and less fat, more some people need more fat and less protein. It depends and you don't know, you're only guessing unless you test. But with that said, you're not gonna gain 30, 40, 50 pounds or more 
by having a low carb diet. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. You can have super high protein and still gain weight. Another topic for another time, but let me go on to what these people can do to make the changes. Change to a low carb diet immediately. Uh, uh, check for range of motion issues, pain issues, limitations. Begin with core stability exercises and then begin bursting on a recumbent bike. What do I mean by that? Recumbent bike, your feet are in front of you and you're pedaling like this. You get to warm up for about three or five minutes. You put the tension as high as you can possibly take that tension and pedal as fast as you possibly can for about 30 seconds. Super fast. If it's too hard to pedal and, and you can't pedal fast anymore just to get that 30 seconds, decrease the intensity. So if it goes up to 20 in the beginning and, and you have five seconds left and you can't pedal as fast, take the intensity down by two and get something out of it just to get those 30 seconds. Repeat that four times, okay? Then you can also do walking on an incline. Incline of four, okay? 3.5 miles per hour. Increase the incline by one each minute that goes by. Not the speed, the incline. Go as high as you can without holding onto the rails. And when you have to come down, you come all the way down just to get your rest. And then you, you do this routine for about two weeks. Some people maybe need three weeks. Only then should you begin doing some type of strength training. This is all strength training, believe it or not. Take strength to do both of the things that I just mentioned to you, and then I would begin with uh, the bozu. You know the half ball that you stand yeah. up? There are things you can do with your hands on the ball, your feet on the ball, create all this, this strength and using these smaller muscles to help you with stability. And only then, after doing that for about a week or two weeks, what I move you to weights, like independent dumbbells, kettlebell training, and so on at a very low level. You have to train to train. Agreed. And what you said was almost identical to what I had written down. I had the, the recumbent bike. I had the three-week ramp up would be the target in my mind, although you monitor it and make sure that, that, is, that he's tracking properly. You know, you don't just say, well, we, we planned for three weeks. Now you're at 100%. If he's not there at that point, you can sp spread it out even further. But I'm comfortable with a patient like this because he played college football and then he went to the ranch. So he's been doing physical stuff a lot. So he's probably in pretty decent shape. He's probably pretty strong. Uh, I agree with you that the, uh, for this particular patient, diet is probably more than 50% of the equation. So we need to do something to just get him losing weight. But then get him to the point where he can do some form of high-intensity training for sure. Uh, and then also, as we talked about last week, it shouldn't be all concentric type movements. This is a 60 year old guy. So let's do maybe 25% um, within the heavier rep range, 10 to 15 reps would be heavy for this guy. 15 or more would be 25%, 25% in the concentrating on the negative portion of the eccentric and 25% isometric so that you're getting a lot. You're not going to do too much damage or you're even encouraging healthy um, connective tissue and joints by doing different forms of, of movement rather than just all just regular old concentric weightlifting. I would argue that if he's in the ranch, depending on what he's doing at the ranch, I have two friends who own large ranches that um, if he's doing lifting bales of hay and, you know, all the ranch work that's involved, that he probably doesn't need to do any strength training outside of that whatsoever. You know, well, his goal, his goal was to get stronger though. So lift more hay. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. L lift so. more hay. Uh, more hay. I, what I, the, the note that I had is is his high intensity or lifting should be very brief, sure. like two sets of, of something, uh, and that's all. Just to because on the ranch he might be lifting fist, fence posts and he might be doing that a hundred or two hundred or three hundred times a day. Same with hay. You do that several hundred times. That's not really that heavy compared to what you could potentially lift with a deadlift or, or a dumbbell bench press. So a little bit of that if he's wanting to gain strength. But for the most part, he doesn't need to be doing long weight training sessions at all. Okay, so let's go to case number three. 45-year-old female, five foot two, 210 pounds, 100 pounds overweight, has type 2 diabetes, notices her heart races when she walks a flight of stairs. Goal, obviously, to lose weight. Avoid being confined to a chair. What is the common theme here? Begin with a low carb diet, ASAP. Check range of motion, pain, limitations. Begins through core stability, 
the bike again, the treadmill again, without having to go through all of that for two to three weeks. Monitor the levels to make sure there's, there's changes not only in blood sugar, but also not in blood pressure. One of the things I learned many, many, many years ago is some people have blood pressure that's too low. And if you take them through high intensity or even heavy weight training, they can pass out. And so there's a lot of monitoring that has to go on here. This person needs to change their diet and lifestyle immediately. Otherwise, they're probably going to die at a very young age um, of, of metabolic syndrome or metabolic disorders being um, a heart attack, a stroke, di complications of diabetes, high blood pressure, etc. So it's, it's an absolute must. And the person absolutely has to start burning that sugar. It's probably that she has diabetes. She has type 2 diabetes. She's extremely obese. So she has to do something. If simply walking up one flight of stairs is causing her heart to race, I wouldn't start her out on the bike at all, personally. What I would have her do when, I, when she starts out is just simply flex her muscles of her, of her arms and her legs while she maintains breathing. Don't hold your breath when you do this. But by doing that, flexing, you can start to burn sugar and become anaerobic quite quickly, especially if you're 100 pounds overweight and diabetic. You can start to burn sugar out of your system and get a lot of the benefits of exercise without even having to get up out of the chair. Now, I'm not saying she shouldn't get up out of the chair. In fact, that's one of the things she probably should do. But simply standing up out of her chair, maybe 10 times in a row, if, she could, if her heart can tolerate that, would be something to start with. Um, you might think that, well, this patient uh, is, is getting into dangerous cardiovascular ranges just by walking one flight of stairs. Do you really want, to have, want her to do intense exercise? And in my studies, what I've found is it's slightly more dangerous to do exercise when you're in this type of shape, but it's much less dangerous for you the, the 23 and a half hours when you're not exercising if you do some exercise. So overall, you're decreasing your risk of having a cardiovascular event. And this is important. So we need to do something. We, need, we don't want to push her into a stroke or a heart attack by having going to a, a uh, a gym and having her do sprints on on a spin bike or having her sprint up five flights of stairs in an office building that would probably kill her so, so that's so that's not where i was going but when i say the recumbent bike look everything's relative right yeah. if you and i are going to sprint we're in a race i'm most likely going to kick your ass because i'm very fast even at my age okay <laughs> but uh, an all-out sprint for me and an all-out sprint for you, even if I beat you by 10 seconds in a 100-yard dash, which is significant, I'm being extreme, is, is exactly the same. So I, I hear what you're saying, and there are certain people, it's case by case, that it could be dangerous with. I never experienced that years ago with, with a person who was like this. If I put them, and I would never put them on a spin bike. You mentioned the spin bike. I would never do that. But when I would put them on a recumbent bike, you know, people like this who are this out of shape burn much, much, much faster in their muscles. To get 30 seconds out of them is, would be extraordinary. So with a person like this, I would still have them on the bike, but their level and their time and their burn is going to be completely different than the other examples I've given. This person, if I'm guessing, through my past, you're going through your studies. And so there's, there's no, not really an incongruency here as much as it is case by case, right? You have to test, 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 test. This person we're talking about now might do only 15 seconds on the bike. They can't do 30, regardless of the, of the tension, regardless. Yeah. Okay. So you have to feel them out. And so there's no right or wrong here as much as it is find someone who can monitor you properly. And I, I think that's important for people to recognize because if you're over fat and you have type two diabetes, I've said this, a thousand times, if I've said it once, I've said it on my radio show many times, and I'll say it here, you've volunteered for that. You signed up for that disease. Nobody forced it on you. It's not contagious. You signed up for it. The good news is you have the ability to make that change without having to rely on medication the rest of your life. True. It's yeah, the, the main thing is just that the, the, she makes gradual progress. Absolutely. If she can barely stand up five times right now without nearly passing out, fine. Work within that range. But... Even she would find that if she just gradually did something every day and started increasing or making a little bit of progress a month or two from now, she would be doing way more than what she could do before she started this. She would be able to make a, a massive amount of progress as long as she does continue to progress a little by little each week and just slightly increase the intensity. She could potentially in six months be doing full out. She's only 45 years old, uh, 45, yeah. 
So she could be doing full out workouts, uh, high intensity, 100% workouts, possibly within four to, to eight months, depending on how she progresses. You just never know how they're gonna, going to adapt to the exercise. Right, so but progress is the main thing. So for the people who are just joining us now, if you didn't get the beginning of the show, we're talking about these five different cases, different ages, different limitations, different goals in mind and how there's a common theme with each of them, but yet we've talked about different things they need specific to them. We just went through three of them. We're going through case uh, number four right now, a 35-year-old male, 5'10", 216 pounds, uh, steadily gained 40. The 1920s produced the ketogenic diet for people with epilepsy and has a plethora of scientific proof showing the benefits of rapid fat loss, decreased insulin levels, improved sleep, and brain function. Eating high fat food while significantly decreasing carbs turns your body into a fat burner from a carb burner. Dr. Myhill said the brain and heart run at least 25% more efficiently on a ketogenic diet. How many times have you been disappointed by fat loss results? Less than optimal organ function due to poor life lifestyle choices, slow or minimize desired results on any diet. We created the first and only keto cleanse system to be the fastest fat loss program on the market by combining the correct keto diet with a full body cleanse. Change from being a carb burner to a fat burner today. Visit 21daybodymakeover.com slash keto, click on keto cleanse and receive cleanse supplements, a keto cookbook with desserts such as keto brownies and grocery list recipes and exercise videos. That's 21daybodymakeover.com slash keto pounds since his mid-20s heart is healthy hasn't exercised for 10 years so what do i want to do here to both look and feel the way he did in high school again the common theme assess range of motion pain limitations begin with a low carb diet i think all that needs to be addressed first the assessment is most important blood work hormones all of that then you begin with core stability and burst training and bike uh, burst training on the bike, right? In particular, the bike, because I think one of the worst things you could do is go in a gym. You hadn't worked out in 10 years, start doing these weights. Then you're so sore. You can't, you can't brush your hair the next day or you can't straighten your arm. That's not fun. It takes you so many days to recover that you can't get back in the gym to do anything again. So you're really not, you got to use your brain and it's not the no pain, no gain mentality. It's no brain, no, uh, no gain. Yeah, with this patient, though, being that he's 35 years old, he's probably the type of guy that in after one week of ramping up, he could be pretty close to 100% of intensity after just one week. He's not like the 60-year-old guy I estimated three weeks of ramp up. The 75-year-old probably never would get to be 100% intensity for the rest of her life, and that doesn't matter. The 45-year-old with diabetes, it might be a three, four, five, six-month ramp up. This guy, one week ramp up, he's probably good. To reach his goals, George, I don't think he, he would probably need to do anything other than moderate weights. I don't think he needs to do any heavy weights at all because if he does rep ranges in the 15 to 25 range, he's going to be able to gain and maintain his strength because he probably, being 35 years old and being 40 pounds overweight, he probably still has most of his muscle that he had when he was 20. So he doesn't need to do super heavy weights or gain strength necessarily. He just needs to recondition his muscles, main, maintain his range of motion, and just get his metabolism back up and burn a lot of fat. And the best way to do that is with rep ranges in the 15 plus so that you get that, that deep burn I, as long as you're going real I high I have to disagree with you with some of this, Doc. And that's because no when you, with, with this scenario, someone's 35, they've been, they've been basically sitting for 10 years. You know, they gained all this weight. I don't know, I don't think that they would have all of the muscle that they need to have at this age especially depending on the diet, because we know certain foods will make you not only gain more fat, but disrupt your hormones and so on, make you weaker, joint pain. And it's going to take more than a week to work through all of that, regardless of the amount of reps they would need. The stability is extremely important. And there are so many exercises that need to be done to create stability in the core. Remember on a couple of shows ago, I talked about the trunk of the tree is where it gains its strength, that and then the, then the roots underneath. And, the, and then the arms or the, the branches of the tree or your arms. And all of this can't do a damn thing if the trunk is weak. And remember, the trunk is not your abdominal region only, as many people think it is. It's your abdominal region, it's your lower back, it's all the muscles that surround your hips, your glutes, okay, your hip flexors, your pelvic muscles. All of that is, is considered your trunk of your tree. 
And if you're weak there, good luck trying to do anything else, especially with good form. And in my opinion, he also needs at least two weeks of core stability, throw him on the bike, throw him on the treadmill, let him get used to that, you know, the, the expansion and contraction of the, uh, of the blood vessels or for the cardiovascular system. So it's not, again, I don't know that there's a right or wrong here. Yours might take a little bit uh, shorter, Mine is more from a safety standpoint, and that's why no one's ever been hurt under me when I trained people for 10 years. That was 20 years ago. So that, that's where I'm coming from with that one. You want to go into case number five? Yeah, I just I, about that one. I, I agree with what you're saying. If he's not stable, I wouldn't have him doing things like, uh, like swing, swing squats with a um, kettlebell or deadlifts or squats, you know, free, free weight squats or anything like that until his core is stable. So, but, but, I'm even, just saying, but, even, but even then, I don't know that I would have anybody do squats right away. The reason for the bike is to get all that connective tissue around your joints, contracting and understanding and listening to each other again. The same thing with the, with the, with the treadmill. It's to get all of that movement and balance involved. So when you go to do a squat with your own body weight, even if it's a quarter squat, you could do a better job than if you didn't do those things. Yeah, and I'm saying I, I agree with that. You have to be stable first. Once he's stable, though, he's probably ready to go sure. full, full steam ahead. All right, so our last case is a, is a um, five foot five female, 140 pounds. She was 120 to 125 pounds at the ages 16 to 21. Does cardio and yoga, no weights. Oh my God, I've got a headache already. And she wants to lose 15 to 20 pounds, wouldn't mind having a ripped stomach, but doesn't want bulky muscles. So let's get into the bulky muscles really fast. And she's 26 years old. That's right. important too. By 26, if you're su go supposed to have bulky muscle muscles genetically, you would have them. When you brush your hair, you'd have big biceps. When you squat down to do something, you'd have big stocky soccer legs. You'd already have that body. If you don't have that body, you're not likely to get that body. Does that mean you can't train and get bigger? No, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're likely to do that. No, you're not going to because you already have the mentality, I don't want to get big. So you're not even going to train that way. So again, going with that common denominator where I'm coming from, check range of motion, pain limitations, get on a low-carb diet immediately, do the burst training on the bike, and then do the, the, the interval training on the treadmill, also doing your, your core stability exercises, so your plank, your side bridge, all of those things we've discussed in the last episodes. And I would do a few other things. I would uh, check her thyroid and some of her other metabolic markers just to make sure anemia, she may have anemia, being a, a woman of, of menstruation age. Um, ketogenic diet is most likely um, although I wouldn't put her on a ketogenic diet if she had weak adrenals, for example. So you want to check some of those things. But most likely, that would be the, the best thing for her, for sure. Um, I would not be scared with this, with this person to put them on exactly what they think they don't need, which is heavy weights. Because there's virtually, as you said, there's zero chance of her getting bulky. Even, and, and if you think you're getting bulky, you're going to notice that you're getting close to bulky way before you just magically become gigantic so, so, so one of the best things for her would be to build as much muscle as she can let, let me comment on that i do want you to finish but this is a good uh, uh interjection here years ago when i trained people i trained some models and they were always concerned about getting too big naturally understood and i had them think of this when they would exercise with weights the next day if you trained hard enough and tense enough you will be heavier on a scale Stay the hell away from a scale. Did you just drink a Red Bull? H2O. Oh, my God. I thought that was a Red Bull. H2O with the American flag. Wait, hold on. You ready? That's what I get for not having my glasses on. <laughs> Red Bull? Are you kidding me? My heart would be... I know. No. So, so Never. What, what I would have females do, in particular models, is pay attention to their, ge to their jeans, their tight pants. Where are they currently tight? Where are they currently loose? And what you're going to notice is that your jeans are definitely going to get tighter. However, they're definitely going to become looser. And so the areas that they're tighter are going to change in most cases and become looser and they'll be tighter in other areas. They would, even though I prepped them, they would always still be freaked out when their jeans would be tighter. I said, let's go back to what I said in the very beginning. 
And then they would say, yeah, you're right. It just feels weird. I feel like I'm getting big. And they wouldn't because I will tell you, the girls I prepared for their weddings with the heaviest weights are the ones who became the thinnest. Yeah. It takes a lot of energy metabolically to build muscle. And even though a female is going to have a hard time putting on more than one or two pounds of muscle, what it takes to do that is a massive amount of energy. So that's the best way to lose body fat for these females is to just add a couple pounds of muscle. It is, it's tremendous what can happen. And I can guarantee you this, George, if you were to analyze that, that 26 year old female, when she was 18 years old, 17 years old, wait, when she looks the way she wishes she looks now, I guarantee you she had more muscle tone than she, than she does now. So that's one thing that, that females of this age need to realize is you had, when you look better, you had more muscle tone. You might've had less fat and that's an important component of this, but you had more muscle tone as well. That's why you look so good. So build the muscle back up, the fat will go, as long as you do the proper diet, like George says, and, and look at the things like thyroid anemia, adrenals, all the other nutritional markers that we need to look at. Millions of people struggle with sugar cravings, excess fat, overeating, cholesterol issues, and high blood pressure. Every diet created in the past 30 years has been too restrictive, bland, or fails to meet your desires. There's a solution steeped in evidence-based science dating back to 1920, and it's not changing anytime soon. 360 Degree Health created the Keto Cleanse to be the easiest, best-tasting solution without feeling restricted by calories. Their Keto Cleanse forces your body to use fat for energy, even if you don't exercise daily. Recipes include cheese, meat, guacamole, and other favorite foods to help balance hormones, blood pressure, and cholesterol with the science to prove it. Tim Tebow, Dr. Oz, Dr. Osborne, and many other doctors discuss the health benefits of keto. Check out their videos at 21daybodymakeover.com. Click on the yellow keto button. Now for a limited time, receive free shipping. Receive four professional grade supplements, cookbook, amazing desserts, such as cheesecake and brownies. That's 21daybodymakeover.com. Look at to make sure the metabolism is uh, functioning like it should. So if anybody has any comments or questions right now for us, we can interact with you. Love to take some of those now. Sometimes people uh, create questions once we've gotten off of being live and then we answer them, but it's great for other people to to see this uh, live if we can do that. I will leave you with this if nobody else has any comments or questions. That is, and this is gonna shock you, Webster. You know me, shock and all, G. Uh, you never, ever, ever have to eat healthy. Only the days you want to be healthy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I knew you were gonna like that. It's not, um, it's, and, and, I, and I got that years and years and years ago. I was at the dentist and I, I looked to the right and I saw this great, this genius, picture with this saying that said you never have to brush your teeth only the ones you want to keep oh they're the ones you want to keep yeah <laughs> right i mean so Pretty. it's an empowering statement of course and if you, you if you want to feel better it starts with your diet and or exercise um don't don't always look for look to the outside for somebody else or a diet or something to fix you don't look for the pill don't look for the quick fix you can keep doing that if you want but you'll keep getting what you have so with that said make sure to share this video we only have exposure to so many people within our friends list. Share this with as many friends as you feel possible that would, would, would benefit from this rather, and as many friends as you possibly can. Have them share it with their friends. My website is 21daybodymakeover.com. Dr. Webster's is completehealthdallas.com. With that said, everybody have a great day.